some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and Brad and I are doing a discussion over Emerge, one of the newest games by Pandasaurus. Uh, I knew absolutely nothing about this game. Uh, you brought it over. I bought it because my wife liked the looks of it, and that was That's the fair. reason. That's fair. Uh, I like the art. Um, Pandasaurus is an interesting uh, company because I feel like they got put on the map with Dinosaur Island and their dinosaur games. And I'm trying to think of any of their non-dinosaur games. After Us, we kind of liked. That was okay. But it was, but it was easy. It yeah, was it was quick. I, uh, but like, if it was just the right length. And, and Fox Experiment that we haven't played yet. I haven't played Fox Experiment. That's true. So, I've heard Fox Experiment is yeah. good. Um, they're Kickstarters. Not all of them, I guess I shouldn't say that. That wouldn't be a good best. Yeah. Their Kickstarters seem to be better. Yeah, I know a lot of people like Skate Summer. I thought it was okay. Um, and that's kind of where they sit for me. Like, I think Emerge is okay. I don't dislike it. I just kind of felt like it was a whatever game. And the thing is, like, they just... This game kind of, like, wants to be more complicated, but also not at the same time. Because you're literally, your entire game is rolling dice, hoping that you can get sets of numbers to place meeples on it. And I know that sounds reductive, and I don't usually like doing that for games where it's like, all you're doing is moving on a, on a map. That's it. But it's like, whenever your entire turn is dictated by, well, I didn't get a single three. Really needed that because uh, threes were my turtles. I can't get turtles now, therefore I can't get seals that all my dice happen to roll. And the goals are about placing seals on different islands, which I can't do. Um, and there are ways to mitigate your die results, but they're limited. Like you have to have the uh, discovery tile, um, or perhaps if you're lucky and got a research tile that let you do that. But even then, I mean, how many times have did you re-roll to still never get a yeah, result that you needed? The same stuff. Yeah, that it's like okay, I guess that's that. And we've played a couple games specifically today that kind of have some mitigation, but they're also short. This game wasn't really all that short enough to warrant having this dice system. I wasn't a fan. Uh. I think it's just I think it's just kind of an okay game. What do you think of Emerge? <laughs> I th I think it's very forgettable. You're yeah, right. Like I don't I saying okay is even too too high. <laughs> I, I mean I, really I, I like if I didn't play it anymore it would be perfectly <laughs> right. fine. It didn't and it's just not there's nothing to it. Yeah. There's, there's so many so many more games of the same length and stuff. I I think the gimmick that they took with this was like, oh, we're, <laughs> yeah. we're going 3D with our <laughs> islands, you know? Yeah, right. It's like, I think that was the whole thing, you know? And it's not, you know, it's, it's like, it's literally the stacking of these tiles is just to be a multiplier. <clears throat> yeah, and, you know, I don't know. The I idea just, of just... discovery is not there. Like, literally, it's like, there's no theme here either, because it's it's whenever you have the tiles that are stacked, and then you're like, I got two twos. <laughs> I discover mm -hmm. the crab. Yeah. Next turn, maybe I'll get three threes to get a turtle. Uh, I mean, and every now and then those games come out that they're just so what like Dice Settlers. You remember when that game came out? That's kind of like, what is this? Uh, and it, it was immediately forgotten. Mm -hmm. Um. I just don't know who this is for. Like, I don't... And another thing, like, to make this game a little bit more interesting, if you could actually spend two dice to get a research tile from the market and use it on that same turn, yeah, that would have made it a little bit more yeah, interesting. Because that was kind of a play I was going to make at one point. And you beat me because I couldn't do that. Right. Because I, I was going to buy that one that let me build a large. Mm -hmm. And then I had, I had the seals. Right. And then, but you... You got the seal thing ahead of me because 
I couldn't oh, do right. all of them at once. Yeah. And, and, and I find stuff, that so. to be just a really dumb decision because if... Because that would make you want to, like, try and combo and be like, oh, man, I really want to re-roll. Let me spend... Ooh, I'll spend these two dice to go and gr out and grab that re-roll uh, research tile. But once you do that, you can no longer discover stuff. For whatever reason, it's so stupid. Because... The the modifier phase where you're just taking that, it's like, yeah, okay, you can... Now, if you're really wanting to go crabs, you can now take a crab tile and place that into your two. So now twos and threes work for crabs. But eventually, that just feels... This game kind of feels very deterministic. Mm -hmm. You have to place crabs on an island before you can place um, seals. Yeah. Or before you can place turtles. turtles you have seals, to place yeah. turtles before you can place seals. Um, and trees, you can place up to four. They, You need more dice to do that. Unless you have research tokens to say otherwise. Or, hey, whenever you steal a bird, place two trees on the island and lands on. Okay, well, that cost me three dice to steal a bird off your island. And now I can get two trees, so that's kind of a couple point swing. Yippee! Yeah. Like, and then whenever you're setting up the game, it's it's mind-boggling, because it's like, you're setting up all these pieces and giving everyone their stuff, and you think it's going to be complex, and then it's, like, not well, at that's, all. That's what I was saying at the beginning. When you were sitting there looking in the rule book, and mm -hmm. we were getting a setup, I was like, this game looks like it. it's going to be super simple, but a lot of just extra crap the, right and then when we start playing it's like well yeah you just roll them dice <laughs> and spin it. them do that and that's that's the game that's that's literally it and what's also weird is like in a two-player game you have these research tokens that are face down um and they eventually become revealed as the game goes on where you're limited on where your islands can be uh because you have to obviously build them up so you have the small islands so once you place them down there's, like, no real reason to wait. Especially because it's not like, ooh, like, the research tiles don't get better. And right, you can just right. build them wherever, so you can just pop them early on. But you're not sure what you're going to get. So you're not going to wait till the end till they're mostly revealed and then go out and start building. Because you're just not going to have, yeah, you get more dice to place, but you're still reliant on them being rolled. And so you're not going to be able to do anything on the last minute island. So, yeah, you're going to pop them early. Uh, and then you're gonna just stack them on that. So it's wherever everyone starts on the on the board, that's what they're gonna focus on because you're gonna level those up. You're gonna be able to get more of those meeples on it to then make it a multiplier. Yeah, that's it. This game has a lot of components just to have a lot of components. Yes, that was, that was and the long board. Like, if they would have made it just a normal square board and then just had the boat go in a circle. Yeah. You know, I mean, because if you're four players, it doesn't matter if two start, you know, like mm -hmm. it's not. You know how, like, movies get made sometimes and it's like this movie wanted to be way more artsy and deep mm -hmm. than it actually ends up being. Like, it almost comes off as pompous. Yeah. That's what I feel like with, like, this design, is, like, this board is long just for it to be like, oh, look how artistic we are. Well, and that's what I was <laughs> meaning. If you look in the back of the box, and that's one of the reasons my wife wanted the game. You look at the back of the box, oh, 3D elements. You know, the, right. The deals, you know, it looks... But then, you, that's that's it. I mean, the highlight of this game is the 3D element. And, and that's I, not even a highlight. That's just, it's just the visual... You know, like I if don't you even think if, it's that if, if cool this, looking. If, if this half of the board was covered up, yeah. and somebody walked past and be like, maybe give it a second glance to look at <laughs> that. But then they're gonna see all this. Oh, the game's finished, right? And it's like, oh, what's what happened on this side of the board? Yeah, well, nothing. <laughs> that's that's the nothing. I discovered everything on these islands, and uh, well, hey, there's a whale on the art. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, I like the art. Um, I I I like the the. I don't even know what kind of art that would be. Uh, now this isn't an art that would make me go, oh, ooh, right. but it's like, oh yeah, that's nice. Uh, I don't think the 3D elements, I don't think it's cool. Uh, like it's your, it's flat, wider pieces of the same art style. Right. But for the people this is geared towards, I think it's the catch them. Like my wife, who's not, 
who isn't a big into buying games and stuff, but she looks at the back sure. of the box and she's like, oh, this looks cool. Like, yeah. You know, if it was just all flat, like if it was just every island was just like this and you're putting stuff on there, mm-hmm. then, you know, but it's, it's, yeah. just, it was, it's a, probably a stylized marketing thing. And or Pandasaurus was like, hey, we have an intern who wants to design games. Let's, yeah, uh, cause let's, this is his only game. Yes. Right. Um, but, and obviously, I'm not. I like. I don't think this. Like, I've played worse games. Yeah, it's not a bad design. <laughs> it's just. It's just you know. Like if we're we're currently in the in the throes of doing our top ten games of the year and top ten worst or disappointing, it's not hitting worst or it's not hitting disappointing because it's nothing of a game. Because <laughs> we went into this with zero expectations. <laughs> right. We, we I almost kind of went into it expecting it not to be the greatest thing in the world. Right. And you know, so that way, and that's what says something about it because it was like. If you go in with low expectations and it still doesn't meet your expectations, <laughs> <laughs> then, then you're like, well, then yeah, that's sometimes argument. you go in like, oh, this game's gonna suck, and it's like, oh, I'm pleasantly surprised. Right. But this one just was what I thought it was going. Yeah, be. I'm like, that's, <laughs> yep. Games like I, like you score it. Uh, at the very least, they could have given a score pad, uh, but not even that. So it's like, okay, here's my multiplier, and that's the final score. Okay, that was that. Moving, moving right along to the very next thing, and it is unfortunate because I've always had the argument of what's worse, a really bad game or a painfully mediocre game, and I am proven time and time again that a painfully mediocre game is worse than an inherently bad game. Um, just because you can have fun with, like, you can have fun with dun- st- fun bad movies. Oh yeah. If they're like yeah, such sure. nothing movies that you're like, I'm now mad. This game didn't make me mad, but I feel nothing. Yeah. Like, uh, and I'm and I'm trying to like think of positive things to say, but at the end of the day, you're right. It's completely forgettable. Um, and I'm gonna have to play it again because my wife's gonna want to play it. Maybe it'll be better. Maybe it. it'll be better on a, on a replay. Because that's the other thing. It's like even um, in terms of variety, like your the way that the goal cards come out is you can't have two of the same type. So basically you can't have two with the same picture on it. Right. There's only a couple of each picture. So there's not that much variety in the scorekeeping. It's very simple. Place a turtle on a large island. Okay. Um, the discoveries are going to be the same. It's literally just going to be the trees, topography, meeple. So there's just nothing here that would warrant even a replay where it's like... Mm-hmm. like I mean, we just kind of talked about a game that was that was... No, it was all right. Forever home. It's like, well, that one has at least has replayability. Right. Uh, this one, like, I think the research tiles are boring. Uh, I think I spent fifty bucks on the game too. You spent forty five dollars paying for the artist, yeah. and five bucks for the game design. I'd rather have spent the twenty five on Forever Home like I did. And I'd I'd rather spend yeah. the twenty five twice. Yeah. On Forever Home. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm just I'm 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 not I'm I'm not impressed. It's another, uh, another Pandasaurus swinging a miss. Yeah, they're kind of one of those designers <laughs> that Dinosaur Island is great, Dinosaur World is great, Dinosaur Roar and Write is great. I've been hearing great things about Fox Experiment, so fingers crossed. You know what's funny about Fox Experiment though is it has like a six point something on really? BGG, and I'm like, but it was like in a lot of people's top tens yeah. of the year, and I've heard good things. I I still need to give it a shot. Yeah. Um, Elizabeth Hargrave, so I'm excited for that. But I think you might be onto something with their Kickstarters. They have more time. It's like they take longer to yeah. work them out instead of just plugging them yeah. out. And they're one of those companies that feel like they we got to put out four games this this mm-hmm. year. We're gonna put them out. And Dead Man's Cabal was a Kickstarter of theirs, I think, and that one was shit from what that I remember. Was, yeah, yeah. That was, uh, but I think that was like a first time designer or something. But they, I again, I know a lot of people like Skate Summer. It had that one had some cool ideas. So maybe they are just one of those companies that casts a wide net. Let's mm-hmm. first time designers try, and if that is their like publishing philosophy, I think that's a good philosophy to have. Mm-hmm. Someone will like this game. Yeah, like. I, I I'm not sitting here saying this game is for no one. I don't know who it's for. It got a six point. It has a six point nine. It has pr- virtually the same rating as Forever Home on BGG. They're the same weight. Yeah. <laughs> this, but here's the thing. You mentioned that, and I was like, 
there's but this game feels like it it should be more complicated but i feel like it's actually less strategic than forever home right uh so i don't know i don't know how this was made i'm just he's a first time designer so that's just kind of going to be what it is uh sometimes you have those designers who come in and it's like oh this is their first game i'm keeping an eye on you here it's like I don't even remember <laughs> your name, and I literally just looked to see who it was. Yeah, that's not really a dig at him as a person, but it's like, because sometimes you get those again where you're like, when you see like a bad actor, and you're like, was that writing? Was that direction? Why is right. were, are they a bad actor? You don't really have that with board games. You can't be like, well, was it the was it Pandasaurus making mm. him? It's like no, he's a designer. It all falls on him. So. I I don't know because you mentioned After Us, which obviously wasn't Kickstarter. That that had enough where you where you were kind of like yeah. thinking about it as, as you were doing. It was uh, more puzzly. It was a lot more puzzly. And it's like, oh yeah, okay, this is this is pretty neat. Um, production quality is good. Yeah, I'll give them that. So, but that's not really a designer thing. I'm stretching. I'm stretching for things to things to say, good or bad. Uh, scale of one to ten. What are you giving Emerge? A zero. Nothing out of Not ten because you, you, well, no, I meant just because. Like I remember when Dice Settlers came out. It's like I remember Z talking about. I don't know what to score it because this game is such a nothing game. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, I guess. I was trying to go between three and four. Okay. <laughs> like. Maybe four. We'll go four. <laughs> four. Because the art's decent. The meeples are kind of cool looking. They are cool looking. I'll just do four. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of in that same boat of dice settlers. Like, when you said this game is forgettable, it absolutely is. Five feels too high. Yeah, I was going but, below that average, so. Yeah, because I'm thinking of, like, other games that I give fives to that would be the benchmark, but I don't give a lot of fives uh i'm i'll i'll put it at a five um usually five my benchmark for fives are like if someone were to ask me to play i'm probably saying no and if someone would be like you want to play a merge no <laughs> like no not really i'm gonna have to <laughs> yeah you're gonna you're gonna have to uh you know what? My ranking is an NA out of 10. <laughs> like, non applicable because any number feels too high, but it's not shit. Like, I'm not giving it a 1. Oh, no. But. No. Ugh, whatever. It's a 5. I'll go with a 5. I'm in a generous mood today. Hmm. You're welcome. <laughs> anyway, that's our thoughts on the merge. Let us know what you think of the game in the comments below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching and I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more of my content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I upload any new content. If you feel like supporting the channel, you can go ahead and click that Patreon link to be taken to my Patreon and any help is truly appreciated. Other than that, stick around for any, any other run-throughs or reviews or cool top tens or whatever I feel like putting on. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.